All right, so we're diving deep into the Toronto real estate market today. Buckle up. If you're listening, you're probably either thinking of buying, selling, or just wonder what the heck is going on. Or all of the above, maybe. Right. We've got 20 articles here, national trends, expert opinions, even hyper-local Toronto stuff. Yeah, we went deep. And honestly, the biggest surprise. Everyone's saying Toronto's cooling off. Mm -hmm. But some of this data, it's like the calm before the storm. You know what I mean? It's fascinating, isn't it? There are so many forces at play. Okay, let's jump right in. Let's do it. First up, the Bank of Canada and their interest rate tango. Two steps forward, one step back. Seriously, they just slashed rates again. Aiming for 2.75% by mid-2025. On the surface, sounds good, right? Cheaper mortgages. Right. But There's a, a, lay it on us. So a lot of experts are saying rates will stay higher for longer. Than the Bank of Canada is saying. Exactly. To, they're predicting rates to go back up by 2026. That's the best. Wow. So is this a momentary dip or the bottom of the roller coaster? A million dollar question, right? And what does this mean for us regular folks trying to figure out mortgages? It makes the fixed versus variable debate even more intense. Yeah, more decisions. But the Financial Post actually has some good advice on that. It's worth checking out. Oh, I'll link that in the show notes. Yeah, for sure. So bottom line, talk to a mortgage broker. Definitely. They can help you weigh the pros and cons based on like your specific situation. Okay, good advice. Good. Now, let's zoom in on Toronto, shall we? We found data that's kind of mind-blowing. Mind-blowing is right. Toronto is becoming an underbidding city. Can you believe it? I know. I remember when people were offering like a hundred grand over asking no questions asked. Wild times. So what changed? Well, the Wahi data shows 88%, a full 88% of Toronto neighborhoods are seeing offers below asking. Wow, that's a huge shift. Massive. We're talking like a few thousand under? Oh no, much more than that in some areas. Like how much? York Mills, for example. Okay, York Mills, fancy. The average underbid there is $246,000. Wait, $246,000 under asking? Yep. That's insane. It's a different world out there. Okay, so buyers must be loving this, right? Yeah. Underbidding power. It's tempting for sure, but yeah. there's always, but with real estate. True. It's all about the micro neighborhoods. Right, Toronto's so diverse, neighborhood to neighborhood. Exactly, so like Witchwood Park. Another fancy one. Still seeing bidding wars. So you can't just assume you're going to lowball every offer and get the house. Nope, hyper-local research is key here. So important. Yeah. So for buyers, underbidding is tempting. But sellers. Might not be the market they were hoping for? No, definitely not. Yeah. Okay, let's tackle condos next. The condo conundrum. They feel like the wild card right now. Totally. So what's the deal with condos in Ontario? What's the data showing? It's a mixed bag, honestly. Okay, give us the rundown. Waterloo, sales are up a bit. A bit. But in London, sales are down. Hmm, interesting. And you know what seems to be the culprit? Tell me, tell me condo fees ah those pesky fees they're really eating into investor profits so is that why we're seeing a dip in some areas investors are backing off could be yeah so does this mean first-time buyers have a chance to snag a condo deal it's possible okay but toronto condos specifically prices are down a bit but we're still seeing that underbidding trend but those condo fees though always a factor you got to do your due diligence right make sure the numbers work long term for sure Okay, so we've got rates doing their dance, underbidding becoming the norm, and condos throwing everyone for a loop. It's a lot to keep track of. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? There's a bit of a dark side to this market. What do you mean? Mortgage delinquencies. Uh oh. Yeah, the CMHC is warning that they're on the rise. So more people are struggling to make their mortgage payments. Unfortunately, yes. Why is that happening? Is it just the higher interest rates? That's a big part of it, yeah. Especially as those super low rates from a few years ago expire. Right, and people have to renew at much higher rates now. Ouch, that's got to hurt. But there's also a broader trend of financial stress happening. Really? Yeah, delinquencies are up for auto loans and credit cards too. So it's not just mortgages, it's a whole financial picture thing. Exactly. So anyone thinking of buying in Toronto needs to do a reality check. A big one. Can you handle those higher payments if rates keep climbing? What if there's like a recession or something. It's all about planning for the what ifs. Being prepared, right? Exactly. This isn't about scaring people. It's about being financially responsible. Totally. Can you comfortably handle the risks that come with a mortgage? Especially in a market as unpredictable as Toronto. For sure. So much to think about. Yeah. Definitely. Speaking of financial help, we're seeing an interesting trend, the rise of the bank of mom and dad. Ah, 
Yes. It's becoming a major player in Toronto real estate. No kidding. StatScan data shows boomers and Gen X are actually taking on more mortgage debt. More? I thought they were supposed to be paying it off by now. You'd think so, but a big chunk of that debt is to help their kids with down payments. Wow, so parents are basically co-signing on those million-dollar mortgages. In a way, yeah. And we're seeing a surge in reverse mortgages, too. Another way for older homeowners to leverage that home equity. So is this, like, a generous gift or a risky gamble? That's the question, isn't it? It depends on the individual circumstances. So reverse mortgages can be good for some but risky for others. Exactly. Sounds like you really need to talk to your family and a financial planner about this. A hundred percent. Get expert advice. Make sure everyone understands the potential consequences. It's about protecting everyone involved. For sure. All right, let's take a little detour westward. To the prairies. You got it. There's some interesting things happening in other provinces. Oh. Things that could actually have a ripple effect on the Toronto market. Oh, okay. I'm intrigued. So Saskatchewan? Yes, Saskatchewan. Both the Conservatives and the NDP are pushing for a PST cut on new homes. Interesting. It's like that idea the federal government had about cutting the GST. Right, trying to stimulate construction, make new homes more affordable. But will it work? That's the big question. Some experts think it'll just drive up existing home prices. So developers will just bake those tax savings into their pricing. Exactly. But others think it could actually boost supply and eventually bring prices down. It's like a real estate tug of war. Exactly. And speaking of moves that could shake things up, there's something happening in Alberta. Oh, what's that? Halal mortgages. Interesting. So they're allowing banks to offer these Sharia-compliant mortgages. So no traditional interest payments. Right. It's a different way of structuring things, and it could open doors for people who couldn't access traditional financing. Right. Serving specific communities. So it's not mandatory for banks to offer these products, but... But it's a big step towards a more inclusive financial system. This is about more than just mortgages. It's about who has access to wealth-building tools. Exactly. And Toronto needs to pay attention to this. If halal mortgages take off in Alberta. It could put pressure on Ontario to follow suit. Right, to offer more diverse financial products. It's a fascinating case study, really. It is. It shows how financial products can evolve to meet the needs of a diverse population. Definitely. Okay, so we've covered a lot. What? Rates, underbidding, condo trends, delinquencies, even the bank of mom and dad stepping in. It's a lot to digest. But before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, yes. I want to shift gears a bit. Okay. Talk about a story that really got to me. Oh. It's not about numbers or anything. The human side of things? Exactly. It's in the walrus. I think I know the one. It's about this woman, Emily Latimer, who was priced out of the market in Cape Breton. Tough market up there. Yeah. But instead of giving up on owning a home... What does she do? She renovated her family's old farmhouse. Wow, that's amazing. It's such a powerful story because it reminds us that home isn't just about market value. Right. It's not just a financial transaction. It's about finding a place that speaks to you. Your soul. Exactly. Even if it takes some work to make it your own. It's inspiring, isn't it? Totally. There's more than one path to home ownership. It's definitely not a one-size-fits-all situation. It's not always about winning bidding wars or getting the hottest neighborhood. Sometimes it's about looking beyond the conventional... Finding a solution that works for you. Love that. It's such a powerful message, especially in a market that feels so driven by profit. And competition. It's about remembering what it really means to have a home. A place to call your own. Exactly. Sometimes mm -hmm. the most fulfilling paths are the ones we create ourselves. I love that message. Me too. It's a good one to end on. Yeah, it is. It is. Back again, deep in the trenches of Toronto real estate. Feels like we just started, and we've already uncovered so much. Right, but that's Toronto real estate for you. Always another layer to peel back. Okay, so last time we were talking about the different players in the market. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the first-time buyers. Okay, first-timers. They're facing a tough situation. Definitely not easy for them. I mean, those lower interest rates, tempting to jump in. Right it's up. tempting for sure, but those rates could easily go back up. And even with some underbidding happening, Toronto's still really expensive. It is. That down payment. It's a big hurdle for a lot of people. And then the mortgage payments on top of that. Yeah, that can be a lot to handle, especially when you're just starting out. So what's the advice for first-time buyers? Jump in now or wait it out? Honestly. It really depends on what your personal situation, how much risk you're willing to take. Right. Everyone's different. 
Exactly. The most important thing is to be realistic about what you can actually afford. Don't go broke trying to buy a house. Exactly. Sometimes renting is the smarter choice. It gives you time to save, right? Yeah. Yeah, build up that down payment, figure out your long-term goals. And hey, renting isn't a failure or anything. Definitely not. It's about making the best financial choice for you at that moment. Right, and it gives you flexibility, too. Oh, yeah, if you need to move for a job or something. You don't have to worry about selling a property. Makes sense. So we talked about first-time buyers. What about the move-up buyers? The ones looking for a bigger place. Exactly. They've already got skin in the game. Right. They've probably seen their home value increase. So they have more equity to work with. But they're also dealing with those same interest rate uncertainties. And those market fluctuations. The tricky situation. Like trying to time a wave. But the wave is made of houses. And mortgages. Exactly. So is now the time to sell an upgrade? Again, it depends. I feel like that's the answer to every real estate question. It often is, honestly. So what does it depend on this time? Well, if you're in a neighborhood that's holding its value or even going up... You might be able to make a decent profit. Possibly, but you have to think about what you're buying into. Right. Are prices in your dream neighborhood also going up? Or are you just jumping from one expensive house to another? And let's not forget all the costs of moving. Oh, yeah. Realtor fees, legal fees... Land transfer taxes. It all adds up. It really does. So you have to do the math. Make sure moving up actually makes financial sense. Don't let that bigger, shinier house blind you. Buyer's remorse is a real thing. Okay, what about investors? Are they still active in this market? They are, but they're being a lot more cautious these days. I can imagine with all the uncertainty. And those condo fees are definitely impacting their profits. Especially with the possibility of interest rates going back up. It's making some investors hesitant to take on more debt. So they're being more strategic. Definitely doing their research, looking for properties that will actually make them money. Even if the market throws a curveball. Exactly. They're thinking long term. Maybe they're diversifying their investments too. Could be. We're seeing some investors moving away from condos. Really? What are they looking at instead? Some are turning their attention to purpose-built rentals. Those buildings designed for long-term tenants. Yep. And there's also some interest in properties outside the downtown core. Where prices are a bit lower. And there's more potential for growth. So what's the takeaway for the average person who's not a real estate mogul? Real estate is a long game. Not a get-rich-quick scheme. Exactly. Don't try to time the market or chase those quick flips. Do your research. Understand the risks. And invest in properties you believe in for the long haul. Makes sense. And if being a landlord isn't your thing, there are other ways to invest in real estate. Right, like REITs. Real estate investment trusts, right? Yep. They allow you to invest in a portfolio of properties without the hassle of actually owning them. So you're not dealing with tenants and repairs and all that. Exactly. It's like dipping your toes in the real estate pool. Without jumping in head first. Exactly. So there are options out there for everyone. No matter your experience or risk tolerance. It's about finding what fits your goals and your lifestyle. Okay, let's shift gears a bit. Talk about policy. The government side of things. Yeah, government policies can really impact the market. Especially in a city like Toronto where affordability is a big issue. They're like the referees of the real estate game. Setting the rules, influencing how the game is played. There's some interesting policy proposals being debated right now. Oh yeah, like what? Well, one that's gaining traction is slashing the GST on new homes. We talked about Saskatchewan considering something similar with the PST. Right. The goal is to stimulate construction, make new homes more affordable. But will it actually work? That's the question. Sounds like a gamble. It is. Some experts think it'll just drive up existing home prices. Because developers will pass on those tax savings to buyers. Exactly. But others think it could boost supply and eventually bring prices down. It's a tough one to predict. Definitely. And then there's the whole debate about foreign buyers. Ah, yeah. Some people want stricter regulations. They argue that foreign buyers are driving up prices. Making it even harder for Canadians to afford homes. It's a hot button issue for sure. It is, and there's no easy answer. No, some people argue that restricting foreign investment could actually harm the economy. It's a complex issue with a lot of different perspectives. Definitely. It seems like every solution has potential downsides. It's like a puzzle with no right answer. A real estate Rubik's Cube. Exactly. Another idea that's been floated is increasing density in existing neighborhoods. Things like laneway suites and secondary suites. Yeah, making better use of the land we already have. Instead of sprawling outward, we build upward and inward. It makes sense, but it would require zoning changes. And there's always pushback from residents. 
People who don't want to see their neighborhoods change. It's a balancing act. So many moving parts, so many different perspectives, it's overwhelming. It can be, for sure. So what's the bottom line for our listeners? How can they navigate all of this? Staying informed is key. Reading the news, following experts. Understanding the factors that influence the market. Including those policy decisions. Exactly. Don't make impulsive moves based on fear or hype. Knowledge is power. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to seek out expert advice. Talk to a mortgage broker, a financial advisor, a realtor. There are professionals who can help you navigate all the complexity. That can help you make informed decisions. Exactly. Remember, the real estate market is cyclical. It goes up, it goes down. Don't panic if things get bumpy. Stay calm. Focus on your long-term goals. You'll weather the storm. Wise words. It's like riding a roller coaster. There are ups and downs, but you'll be fine. As long as you keep your hands inside the car. And your eyes on the track. And we're back for the final stretch of our Toronto real estate deep dive. The home stretch. We've talked about interest rates, bidding wars, even the emotional side of finding a home. It's been a journey. It has. But before we wrap up, I feel like there are still some nuggets of wisdom you've got. Oh, I always have a few more insights up my sleeve. Okay, lay them on me. Well, one thing I keep noticing is this idea that Toronto's market isn't an island. What do you mean? It's all connected to the rest of Canada and even globally. Right. What happens in other places can affect Toronto. Exactly. Like we talked about with Saskatchewan's PST cut and those halal mortgages in Alberta. Those were good examples. Policy decisions in one province can ripple out. And it's not just policy. Think about those condo sales trends up in Waterloo, down in London. Right. Those were interesting. If those trends continue, it could impact the Toronto condo market, too. So we're all part of this bigger ecosystem. Exactly. What happens elsewhere matters. We can't just focus on our own little bubble. Nope. And it's not just Canadian cities, either. What do you mean? Global stuff matters, too. Inflation, supply chain problems, even political instability. Oh, yeah. Those can definitely affect things. It can impact investor confidence, interest rates, even the demand for housing in Toronto. It's all interconnected. Everything's connected. Like a giant game of Jenga, pull one piece out and the whole tower wobbles. Love that analogy. It's true though, right? So we need to stay informed. More than just local trends, you need to understand the bigger economic and political picture. Read the news, pay attention to global events. Got it? Exactly. Okay, one last thought-provoking thing before we sign off. Hit me with it. The Bank of Canada's deliberation summary mentioned the impact of slowing immigration. Interesting. Immigration has been a huge driver of housing demand in Toronto. So if that slows down, could it actually cool the market even more? It's a possibility long term, of course. Right. Predicting the future is impossible. And it's something to think about, right? For sure. It raises some big questions. What happens to property values if immigration slows down? What does it mean for your investment strategy? Big things to consider. So much to think about. There is. Okay, as we wrap up this deep dive, what are the key takeaways for our listeners? I'd say, first and foremost, knowledge is power. Do your research, understand the market. Exactly. The more informed you are, the better decisions you'll make. Don't just rely on gut feelings or what you hear from your friends. Definitely not. Read, follow experts, stay curious. And remember, there's no one-size-fits-all answer in real estate. Nope. What works for one person might not work for another. Your financial situation, your risk tolerance, your lifestyle, it all matters. It does. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Mortgage brokers, financial advisors, realtors, they're there to help. They can guide you through the process, help you make informed decisions. Like a Sherpa guiding you up Mount Everest. Exactly. They know the terrain, the risks, and they can help you reach the summit safely. Love that analogy. And lastly, remember that the real estate market is cyclical. Ups and downs, booms and busts. Don't panic if things get a little rough. Stay focused on your long-term goals. You'll be fine. So stay informed, seek expert advice, and it's a marathon, not a sprint. Well said. With the right mindset and the right information, you can navigate this market. Absolutely. Well, that wraps up our Toronto Real Estate Deep Dive. It was a good one. It was. Thanks for all the insights. My pleasure. Anytime. Remember, everyone, stay curious, stay informed, and never stop learning. And happy house hunting, selling, or investing. Whatever your real estate goals may be, we're here to help. Until next time. See you then.